I'm excited. I'm very excited. Today we have the first challenger for the Thrift Dweller versus series. Um, I gotta get used to saying it. We're still working out the kinks. You put up three of your greatest finds from the wild. You compile them in a list and you put it up against one of my lists of three of my greatest finds from the wild. And we present it to the audience and we ask them to, to vote or put their voice in in the comments below and let us know who reign supreme whose list is better you can judge it for whatever criteria uh, you hold near and dear to your heart and what makes them greatest finds from the wild obviously we want you to find it somewhat in the wild justify it but we don't want to hear about your you know five thousand dollar ebay sale or your trip to the local video game store there's no luck involved there's no fun story there so aside from that the criteria is open for you to define uh, what are your greatest finds from the wild today's challenger longtime friend of the channel kmd baby k to the d yes siree i'm excited he is very energetic but let's get to it here's the man himself hey everyone kmd baby here today we will be taking on first dollars nate and their top three greatest finds in the wild but to take on nate uh, we can't just have any old things no one's gonna really care about you know what i found haunting ground in a lot of 35 PS2 games on Facebook for $40. We need something with more substance, something with a little more story. So, let's put the gloves on here and accept this challenge. Oh, I like the energy. I like the energy a little bit. Just a touch of condescension in there. I like it. And he's going to need it because he's going up against video number three. He chose my number three pre recorded video. And that video was titled The Power of Friendship. Let's jump into that one now. You know, uh, being in this basement, for people who don't know, I'm kind of socially isolating from my family. This is real, real. This is a shoot interview. This is not Queen Nate in, in acting wrestling mode. I'm actually social distancing from my family right now just because of where I work. I can't talk about it. Just to keep my family safe, I've been staying away from them, kind of hermiting myself in the basement. And the fun thing about making these videos is that I get to look back at old Thrift Dweller videos and kind of relive really... Uh, fond memories. One of the best things I think that I ever did in my life was starting a video blog and a blog with my best friend uh, Lester chronicling, journaling our fun adventures of the past. More of a less adversarial, somber tone. Video number three. I still think you're gonna have to uh, meet your maker. Abandon all hope, all ye who enter here and challenge Cleonate for the strap. Where's my strap? As you can see, Kuya Nate recorded this in the month of Movember. He had the uh, he had the heel stash, if you will. It's a nasty, it's a nasty mustache. I grew it in support, spiritual support of people who are raising money for men's health. So hopefully you can understand how this is gonna go. We're gonna go down the list, and we're gonna compare his third pick to my third pick, his second pick to my second pick, and my first pick to his first pick. And that's it for this video. You guys will decide in the comments below who you think won. And we'll do a follow-up video. Address some of the comments people left. And Cricket Kuya Nate, the promoter, the Vince McMahon of this challenge, will declare the winner. So here we go. Number three. Let's start, Let's start wearing the strap. you got to act like a champion if you want to be the champion. Today's video. It's all about the power of friendship. A lot of throwback in this a video items that I don't think I could ever sell like ever number three on my list back in January did I say January back in January of 2013 boys night out number three you guys remember that series one of the first people that we met on YouTube was 64 bit Matthew at the time he was going by Ramstein fan he lives out of town so he at this point in our lives you don't have as many kids I don't think we had any kids we were out and about he came into the city to visit and being the gracious man that he is, or maybe because he cut in front of me and walked into the Goodwill first before I did, he spotted with his eagle eyes, like Legolas, three Turbo Graphics games complete in case. I was the only one in the group that had a Turbo Graphics 16, so Matt graciously 
handed me the football and I ran with it. Three games. Three dollars a piece. The first game was Dungeon Explorer Complete in Box, which today goes for forty dollars. Dragon Spirit, which today goes for fifty dollars. And Bonk's Adventure is probably the funnest game out of that lot. The only one that I played anyway <laughs> since I bought it. Goes for sixty bucks complete in box. Grand total. Grand total of 150 bones. These pickups have the benefit of time. <laughs> They've appreciated value since we picked them up at the time. Uh, truth be told, that's funny. I said I could never sell these items. I meant number two and number one. Number three I sold since I bought them. <laughs> oh, I'm such a heel. I sold them uh, with my TurboGrafx-16 in a lot locally. And let's just say I 10 x my money. Four times. That's a lot of elbow drops. Can you survive all those elbow drops? Roman Reigns is the head of the table. Queen Eight's the head of Thrift Dweller. Come at me, dog. Uh, so let's get started here with my number three. It includes a PlayStation lot. I found uh, at a grass sale. Each of them were about 50 cents each. So turn it off here. 50 cents. Tomb Raider 3. Very important part of my Tomb Raider collection. I'm a big Tomb Raider fan. Uh, so that was helped me out there. Next thing up. And that same thing, 50 cents, Parasite Eve 2. Very important uh, game in my collection as well there. Next up, not the biggest hit, Iron Soldier 3. But the game probably has the most meaning out of the lot. In that it came from Laser Tech Video. This was my local video game and movie camera rental store, which is near my house. And um, this is the, also the only game in my collection that actually has the Laser Tech branding. And it has since closed uh, many years ago now. The other game in that lot was Brigandine on the PS1. Um, I used that to trade into PMP games later with Troubleshooter to get a uh, holy grail of a game here, The Misadventures of Tron Bone. So that is my number three these things here. But we're going to need to do better than that. I have not seen his list yet, just so you know. Here's number two. Moving on to number two here, a little more story, a little more feels. This is Deathstalker on Laserdisc. This I picked up from Lasertech just as they were going out of sale or closing down the business basically. Uh, the owner, Mr. Fenske, who was a teacher and actually taught me, I think it was Canadian history in grade 10, uh, was closing down the store so they were kind of selling off everything. He had all these Laserdiscs in his collection. They are kind of put up around the top of the store kind of thing as kind of more display thing. Um, this one appealed to me for the art. It's got a very kind of like a Conan theme art to it there. So I took it down. I asked him, would you sell it to me from his personal collection? And he agreed. I can't even remember exactly what I paid. Uh, like 10 maybe $20 at the most. Uh, but the really thing is for me is that this was something from his collection from the store that I used to go to that is now closed down and he has since passed away. So. That has, this has a little more meaning here. Uh, this is why I always kept this in my collection here. It's the only laser disc I own. And there's just kind of a quick look at the back. That is my number two greatest find. Number two on my list. This is kind of a multi friendship situation. That does not sound right. There are times when you go out into the wild and you find items, and there are times where the wild comes to you. And this is one of those cases. Uh, good friend of the show, Matt. 64-bit Matthew. This one I'll never sell. It's actually one of my favorite games. I'm looking for it right now. From uh, my friend Matthew's Adventures in the Wild, he comes up to me and he gives me this. A case and manual for the Hyperstone Heist. Teenage Ninja Turtles. He knew I was a big fan of the turtles. We had, ma we had made videos talking about the turtles. And we used to give each other gifts every time we visited each other. And he gave me this. It was empty. It was empty, but he found it in the wild. From the wilds there, he delivered it into my hot little hands. And I made a video about this talking about, hey, you know, if anyone out there uh, putting out the feelers can help Queenate complete this game, you know, putting out my, put myself out bare to the wild, holler at me. A week later, we, we get a ring from a fan. Not really a ring. He messaged us on the, chat, on the video. And he says, yo, I found this game out in the wild. I'll sell it to you for five bucks. We met him at the University of Manitoba. Lester and I, uh, one hot summer day, went to go meet uh, this little, younger, I'm not going to say little, he, well, he's smaller than me, but this young, blonde-haired-looking kid 
who since then has been featured in many a video, you know him as Noah. At the time he sold it to me, this game was not worth anything close to what it's worth like today. But yeah, he sold it to me for five bucks. The Power of Friendship completed this. Triforce. Box, manual, and game. Kablam. Five bucks in total is what I spent on this, but sentimentally it is worth... I don't know. 500 bucks? Do you not agree that this game meets the criteria for the greatest finds from the wild? Let me know in the comments below. You are the judge, you are the arbiter. Let me know in the comments below. Does it meet your criteria or not? Do you give this point to my opponent? Because the next game that I mentioned on this list, I think it will seal the deal for me back. And number one on each of our lists. Well, my number one is um, relates to our friend of both of our shows. A friend of both of us. That is 64-Bit Matthew. He was on the hunt for a, a complete North American Virtual Boy collection. And I was kind of in talk, talk, talks with him and I seen a Facebook deal for a Virtual Boy with controller and power supply and had six games. Um, five of which he needed. So I messaged the person and got the deal done. Um, they, the reason they had this Virtual Boy is because they, at one point, were owned a rental store. Uh, I'm not really sure where their rental store was, but it was not in uh, my town there. So I've got this here, so I have this, and the only two games that I have left from that set, um, which I didn't end up trading to him, to 64 Matthew, were Red Alarm and Galactic Pinball. So those are the two games I kept from that uh, find there. The other games that I ended up trading to 64 Bat Matthew were Vertical Force, Wario Land, Panic Bomber, and Jack Brothers. I believe Jack Brothers at the time was about a hundred dollar game in value there. And I think now if you want to look at the price charting, it's about seven hundred dollars Canadian. Uh, but that's irrelevant. The main thing was he needed those games that I traded to him, which I think brought uh, Matthew to I think he was two games short of his complete Virtual Boy collection, which I think he did complete later that year in uh, twenty fourteen. Um, so that wraps up my number one greatest find of all time. So now, Nate, it's up to you. Let's see what you got. Because the next game that I mentioned on this list, I think it will seal the deal for me back, back in the winter of 2012, the genesis of Thrift Weller. There was not a lot of people doing like out in the wild videos. I'll admit this, Lester and I kind of, we thought we came up with the idea ourselves, but I'm sure there's tons of other people doing, uh, you know, game hunting videos at that time, but there wasn't that many that we saw. And one really bad winter stormy day, Lester and I went to this uh, pawn shop where I knew that they had these two games that I've been eyeing. These games have popped up from different pawn shops who have like popped up and went under. And obviously they sell their supply to another pawn shop that pops up and then, you know, went under. I've tried to buy this game like twice. That's actually really funny. The first time I saw these games, they, were, they had like an 80 on them and a 60 on them. They were still expensive at the time. And the guy behind the counter charged me 80 cents and 60 cents. I booked it out of there. I didn't even ask for my uh, change. And the owner, the young guy, the owner of the pawn shop ran out, put his hands on my hood and goes, Hey, those games are a hundred and whatever dollars. And I'm like, oh man, sorry, dude, this guy. I would have drove away, but I didn't want to hit the guy. Like He was blocking my car from getting out of our parking space. I noticed it popped up at one pawn shop and then ended up in this hole in the wall pawn shop that not a lot of people want to walk into because there's lots of bars and wood on the windows. Lester went with me that day. You did not see this part of the video because they would have, you know, pawn shops don't really like you recording in their stores. Security reasons, okay? But this old, retired-looking biker dude with his long gray beard, leather vest, who wanted a hundred something dollars for these games. You know, the cheek on Nate slaps out 70 bucks. I think it was 60 some odd dollars and some change. I put it on the counter and I said, hey, my friend, this is all I have. Will you take this for those two games? I know they've been around for a long time. I look at Lester. I'm trying to tell him telepathically. I think we insulted this guy, Lester. Then without saying a word to us, he took the money, put it into the till, and then just gave me the games. I kind of wanted a bag and a receipt. But I think I just turned around and walked away with him quickly as I could with Lester. We were so hyped when he got back into the car. Not because of the grab that we got, but because we did not die that day. 
<laughs> I'm over exaggerating for dramatic effect. But we walked out of there with a Dragon Warrior 2 and 3 for the Nintendo. Almost, almost complete in box. 2 and 3. I think the number 3 was missing like a map, but I had the manual in the box. That one now complete in box in today's day and age. Number two, Dragon Warrior 2, which is, uh, which was the more complete, came with the map, came with the manual, the box was in better condition. In today's market on PriceCharting.com is going for $132 American. Remember, I pay Canadian prices. $35 Canadian is what I paid for those two games each. But to me, the value of those games is in the sentimental story that I just shared with you. Um, one of my favorite memories ever. And especially in today's day and age, those memories are priceless. You know, before this whole thing, we kind of focused on what we didn't have. And I think after we come out of this, we're going to be thankful for everything that we did have. So keep that mindset uh, going forward. There you have it. I, as of recording this video, have not seen uh, KMD Baby's list yet. But I applaud the effort. You know, I have to say better luck next time, perhaps. But let us know what you think in the comments below. Whose list was better? Hopefully you were entertained by today's stories. And kind of that's why we did this. You know, it's not just bragging about the items you found. We want to know what makes them important to you. What makes them uh, the greatest finds from the wild. Mine had a theme. Mine's are more fun. To be honest, it's more fun. This isn't Bloodsport. This is a celebration of the retro video gaming community. And damn right I said retro. So, uh, who reigns supreme? Check us on the channel next time. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss follow-up videos. If you want to see the official challenge uh video thing you know the concept it'll be linked in the description below this is Nate from thrift dollar piece take care of yourselves and each other